Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at a unlimited Tanko Haven deck. I wanted to give one a go. I haven't played a Tanko Haven for a little while and really just had an itch to scratch. So I thought, why not? I found the deck list on a game with and was like, yeah, we'll give it a good go. So we're going to get right into it and check it out. Kicking us off, we're up against Rune, which seems to be most typically Mysteria Rune in Unlimited at the moment, which is a little bit of a pain. It's not the deck that you want to go up with the most. But we start off uh, pretty reasonably, to be honest. I mean, we got Tenko Shrine, Glove Stairways, Mosaic Holy Water. Really can't go wrong. Really, the only trouble in this deck can be not drawing Tenko Shrine. If you don't have that before turn 5, you can run into a pretty big problem. Of course, that doesn't make the matchups impossible, it just makes a lot of the matchups a little more difficult. And of course, Mysterian Circle is a pretty decent way for our opponent to start things off. For us though, we're just going to take a pretty casual Unicorn Dancer, get our little Unicorn Spear going. I don't mind taking little chunks of damage in the beginning, so taking a couple damage there is usually fine. Especially if I can counterbalance it with, say, White Fang Temple. And we've got the Double Tenko Shrine now, so we're pretty set up for our long-term game. It's just the short-term that we need to be careful of. Like, this current board is a little tricky to handle. But honestly, I don't really have too many good options, so... Really, it's just going to be setting up whatever I can for a good Tenko turn. So, Jeweled Priestess sets us up pretty well. We're going to take a little bit of damage again, but at least we did heal a bit. And there's Owen. Definitely they're aiming for as many Mysteria cards as they can get now. I wouldn't actually mind giving Unlimited Mysteria a go. I might have to find a deck list for it to cover for you guys. Oof, not... Not a great turn to honestly be able to do nothing. I did a rough workout, and from what I worked out, they're not able to actually kill me this turn. Not in any practical way. It would require something a little off the wall. So I took that chance. Let myself get down to 3 health. Knowing that I was going to heal a little bit. Just so I could buy enough time to set this up. So Unicorn Spear was great, because I knew it would proc the Wythang Temple. All I needed was that nice ping on the 2-2 so that I could deal with the 3-4 without being any kind of issue. And now it's just a really back and forward game. Making that recovery was extremely important in this matchup. But at least Class President doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. And now that I've got God Sworn up, it's going to be very hard for them to just one hit kill me. It's going to require at least two hits, which is good. And any healing we get above that will, of course, increase how many times they have to hit it. As they can only deal 4 damage at a time. Carbuncle, so they're aiming for some spell boosting. And setting themselves up with a ward to try and survive this next turn. And they did concede. Like, we had the out anyway, we would have just played our Black Inscripture. Which would have won us the game, so not too big an issue. For the next matchup, we're actually up against Shadow. Another reasonably common one when you're just playing on ladder. I have noticed Shadow's severe drop-off in Grand Prix is definitely more of a lean, lean towards Rune at the moment. Not a big surprise, honestly. Of course, by the time this video comes out for you guys, I think Grand Prix will actually be over, so that statement's kind of not relevant by now, but as of when I'm making this video, which is just a little bit in advance, we've just started the Stage 2 for Grand Prix, because this should be almost... Almost a week between this video and when I when I was playing Grand Prix. But it doesn't change much. I mean, the Unlimited format, I don't see the meta shaking up too much, really. I mean, Unlimited doesn't. Even with new expansions, you don't see a huge shift. Usually, they're just minor adjustments. So this hand started off reasonably strong. The only real issue was getting that Tenko. Once we have that, had that, though, we knew we were pretty set. It's just a slow and steady setup now to get some decent healing options, and Double Pegasus Sculpture isn't bad. We've just got to hope that any more setup they have isn't too major. And there is the full board. 
Luckily, Shadow doesn't have many ways to buff on turn 5 or 6, so you actually get a couple of safe turns that you can kind of sit pretty comfortably with your hands and not have too much of an issue like this. Once you work out how much damage they could deal, it wasn't going to be enough to be an issue, so it really wasn't a big worry. They did still go face, dealing a good chunk of damage. But that'll pretty much be the end of them thanks to Themis Decree because it basically will reset the board state and then they have to flood the board again. Which they do pretty well actually, I mean, going for the Cerberus play was definitely the best way to handle that. Of course, once I have the Cerberus up on the board, it's very easy to counter that with the Tenko. As Tenko does just slam that really hard. And so I did decide to kill the 2-1 puppy, because I would heal actually one extra health onto the 4-drop, which is way better. And I would basically lose the same value no matter what, so why not? Now, another Cerberus. I wanted to avoid playing Decree too much last turn, that's why I didn't just straight up drop Decree and I went a little more of a roundabout direction, plus I really wanted to keep a healing option up, so... Worked out pretty well. I could have probably done that again here, but this time I did just decide to throw to the decree. Basically saying, if you have Ektar, go ahead and play it. Which is the main reason for setting up, of course, the Unicorn Knight and the Unicorn Spear. But they do go for the Zombie Party. A little more interesting. As I do want to actually remove that. And top decking that Tenko there does give me the option to just start swarming this board. So I go for the the keel a little a little earlier than I'd like. I would have liked to have saved him, but I mean, this isn't a bad option. We're going to get six damage next turn, or well, this turn, end of turn, which is pretty nice. And really, now it's just a matter of control. There's not a lot that my opponent can do, and all I really need to do is hold the board. So I couldn't have uh, quite won this turn, which is why we played the God Swan as it does protect us from any big threats. Especially, say, hmm, I don't know, big guy, gold, has a pretty ugly face, does really love killing people at 15 health. <laughs> but it worked out pretty well, honestly. There's not a lot my opponent could have done now. I mean, all they can do now is heal with the 3-5, keep themselves out of range. And as long as I attack with this 5-2, there's not really many ways I could lose this. As I expected to lose the 5-2 as I was clearing the board. Even though I probably could have just went Banish first and kept my ward. Not that that was really a problem at this point in the match. And the keel ended up being the perfect top deck to win. Even though I could have probably set up a more guaranteed way to go. This worked out just fine and did end up winning the game anyway. So hope you guys did enjoy this video, I have a lot of fun playing Tenko. It's, again, it's one of my favourite decks, right up there with like Daria decks and stuff like that. A lot of people still hate it after Tenko was a huge meta for a while, but I enjoyed Tenko well before it was any kind of big meta deck, and even after it was a meta deck, so why not? It's a lot of fun, recommend giving it a go. It's not super expensive, I mean, we're only running four legendaries total, so reasonably cheap if you are a newer player. Otherwise, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. You'll find this deck list in the description below. Until next time, see ya.